Hey, Mike, thanks so much for joining me on Teach Me a Skill. Happy to be here. Thanks for asking me. What are what skill are you going to teach me? Oh, as you may remember from us talking about it previously, uh, I'm sorry to throw your question under the bus. Uh, the skill that I'll be teaching you, you could edit all of this out. The skill that I'll be teaching you is uh, doing cryptic crossword puzzles. That's great. And what are uh, cryptic crossword puzzles? I'm really glad you asked. Uh, it's like a crossword puzzle. So let's, let's assume that you and many people know what your basic crossword puzzles are. It's like that, except kind of you don't need to know as many things, but you do need to, in each clue, do something that isn't just look at the clue and figure out uh, you have to try to you have to figure out what the clue is asking and so i have this book of cryptic crosswords that in the in the introduction it shares like the different ways uh that a clue could be trying to clue you into what the answer is so for example it could be an anagram the word there's a the word throne uh might be anagrammed as hornet the clue for throne might read big chair bothered hornet so the clue is throne, uh, or the answer is the answer is throne. So a, a throne is a big chair, and bothered hornet means take the word hornet and bother it. So it's saying that there's different ways that they'll indicate to you that something might be an anagram. They might say like scrambled something, or like a miss, or a rye, or like you know weirded in some way. So each clue will have two parts of it. One which tells you one meaning of it throne big chair and the other which in this case is the anagram of hornet bothered hornet which also gives you throne so there's two ways to get to the answer and the way that it it's described here is that it should make it feel like a key in a lock so that if the if you're like oh yeah that the answer can only work like this and it covers all of the words in the clue. Like there's gonna be no words in the clues that are like extraneous, and there's a reason for all of them being there in the order that they are. The next, so there's anagrams, there's another kind that can be like hidden words. Let's see, oh yeah, so aha, green pens match is a clue that has the, the word agree hidden in it. Like the end of the word aha, and the beginning of the word agree. They'll always tell you how many letters it is, so if you're like, oh, you're looking for five letters, uh, hidden in there. Oh, and so aha, green pens match. The second half of it is pens match. Uh, oh, sorry, match is agree. Agree means to match, and pens mean encloses, like in puts in a cage, puts in a pen. So it's the clue is saying that aha, green is the thing that pens in the thing that means match. So in aha, green is agree the penned meaning of match. Uh, so that's two of eight things, I think. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's only eight things, eight, eight ways these things can go. Uh, one is a reversal. Uh, so here's a clue, returned beer of kings. And so of kings means re is regal and returned beer is regal backwards, lager. So when it says something like returned or reversed, or something that means that, then that might mean you're looking for a word spelled forwards and backwards. Uh, some of them might be a homophone. So for example, hot dog topping gathered for audience. Uh, so mustard is the hot dog topping and gathered to an audience, it's saying is mustard, like the past tense of muster. Oh, for the audience is means that Mustard and mustard sound the same. That audio-wise, for an audience, that is what's going on there. So if there's a word in the clue that means something like, sounds like, or listen to it, then you can know that it doesn't have to be the two things are spelled the same way. Uh, okay, two meanings. Uh, metal guide, four letters. So uh, the answer is L-E-A-D, which is a metal and then to guide is to lead. So each word there has a different meaning of those letters. Deletion, oh, this is fun. So this one is first off most uncompromising mountain. Uh, and so first off means we're gonna take away one of the letters. So the answer ends up being severest, which means uncompromising. 
or most uncompromising. And if you take the first off that most uncompromising, you take the first letter off severest, you get the mountain Everest. Uh, two more. Container. Kid keeps near this evening. Ah, okay. So here, the answer is tonight. This evening is tonight. And kid keeps near means that a word for kid is holding in a word for near. So tot keeps nigh. So you take the word tot and you put nigh in it and you get tonight. Does that make sense? Uh, not really, but maybe we could try doing oh, this. Oh, yeah. For that one, let me just... Uh, so think about the word tonight. It yep. starts with T-O and ends with T. It's got tot all around it. And then in between the T-O and the T is N-I-G-H. Does that okay. make sense? Right, which means near. Yeah, so there's near in the middle and kid on the outside. And the clue was kid keeps near this evening. And then the final, is, final one is charade. Okay, what is that one? <laughs> Anti-abortionist eight red is... Uh, and 11 letters, so I'll just read what it says here. As in the game charades, a charade clue breaks the answer into pieces and clues them individually. An anti-abortionist is a pro-lifer. The word eight is given directly, and together they spell proliferate. So anti-abortionist, eight, spread. Anti-abortionist is pro-lifer, eight is eight, and proliferate is spread. Okay, so those are the basic ways that these clues can exist and that's what makes them different than a regular crossword puzzle, to answer your question. I mean, yeah, this seems like exactly the kind of puzzle I would imagine you might enjoy. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't. I mean, I've, I, I didn't know about them until probably, like, I think, six or seven years ago. I mean, I, I think I'd seen them in, like, the you know various newspapers or game books or whatever. And because I'd never done them and didn't really understand them, I, I didn't do them until I was in my 30s on tour with my good friend, Zach Sherwin, whose brain also likes things like this. In fact, he has a show that he does live and also, uh, when he can do it live, and also an online version uh, called The Crossword Show, uh, where he does comedy, music, trivia, art, uh, out of uh, and into crosswords. So he and I went on tour for a few weeks, each of the years, 2013 and 14, and we took this book with us and did these, this was the way we had fun in the car, among also being friends and uh, enjoying talking to each other, not regarding crossword puzzles. Um, so yeah, these are, you are right. This kind of thing is a thing I like. That's cool. So you've been doing the same book since 2013. Great question. Uh, I don't do them regularly out of the book anymore. Uh, they are things that I love doing, but uh, sometimes they're hard. And uh, and so it was like really fun to do them with Zach. And so like when we're in the same place, we might do them, uh, but we will do them together and that'll be a lot of fun. But uh, on my own, I don't always pick up this book. Cool. So it's like a social thing. Yes, it is. But, but, your, but your question is now... Uh, motivating slash shaming me into picking up the book on my own sometimes. It's okay. Maybe you and your girlfriend could do, do one together. You're, you're absolutely right. We could. And maybe we can do one together right now, eventually. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. So I sent you one and you have it? Um, yes, I've got it uh, printed out. Great. Wonderful. The way that we, that Zach and I have always uh, started off is to look at the ones that are the shortest first. Okay. Uh, because those seem like they'll have... Uh, statistically speaking, the simplest uh, answers that we can find. So, um, so can I ask you a question? Like of the, the, this isn't like a regular crossword puzzle with like a grid. It looks like the there are um, lines on it suggesting that the words may not be filled in straight across or straight down. Uh, great question. So yes, the I'd say another difference between cryptic crosswords and regular crosswords, at least as we're looking right now is that there are no blank spaces that like this, when we finish it, when it is finished, every square will have a letter in it. Like regular crossword puzzles, like there are some words that will intersect and share letters, but unlike regular crossword puzzles, sometimes like if you look at one across, you'll see that it's seven letters, it, like the yeah. number next to it, it says illicit sellers of piano seats, seven. If you start at one across and go till all the way uh, till seven across from it, that's almost all the way because it's an eight by eight grid. So 
one across will fill up almost all the top row, but it w- you can see the line there between that second to last and that right. last square, with, which say number five, and it's for five down and six right. down. Yeah, they'll, they'll just be like right up next to each other. So it'll, it'll look weird if you're used to looking at regular crossword puzzles, but it works, generally speaking, the same. So like if we look at eight across, that starts in the middle of the second row, and it's four letters. So if we find those four letters, we just put them in there, and then we're done with that like you would a regular crossword. So let's see. Uh, it says charge pounds sterling. That makes sense. Ooh, boy. And when, when things are in parentheses, that it could mean, like, that makes sense. Uh, let's see. So s- sterling is silver, pounds are weight, or it could be money, charge. Yeah, quid, maybe. Uh, yeah. And none of this right now uh, does make sense. So for, for the interest of viewers, and uh, let's let those marinate inside. And let's jump down to number 18 across. Star stock finally dropped. And so one other thing that might not have been totally clear is that each clue is broken down into two halves uh like when we have one like in the examples that we gave uh it would demonstrate that like so this is either going to be the word star is one of the meanings and then stock finally dropped is another or it'll be star stock is half of it and finally dropped is the other or oh what this one probably is is uh finally dropped is like the one that was severest minus the first thing to take off the s from the beginning of severest to make everest so this one probably is a five letter word that if we take off the last letter one of the words will be mean stock and one of the words will mean star is it possible that like the stock finally dropped is like a bear market and the bear is like this constellation ursa uh that is good thinking outside and or inside the box (laughs) If they wanted us to pick bear because there's a constellation made of stars that is a bear, then they would have said more than star. Uh, They would have said constellation. But uh, so, like, it would be the kind of them, like, is it shine could be, isn't it exactly the word that means star? But then if, if for some reason, then dropping the final letter of shine made shin, and that meant stock, then that would be perfect. But, uh... Stock finally dropped. Uh, I'm going to real quick uh, Google if there are any synonyms for stock that make us uh, feel like that's going to be the answer. Do you consider using outside aids like the source is cheating? I don't in the way that like I, I would consider like looking in the back of the book cheating. Like right now I'm like, okay, for for verbs, there's sell, market, supply, keep, have, carry, handle, offer, trade. And none of these, like, even if one of those is the right answer, like, it's not the answer that we're looking for. There still has to be, like, this other mechanism done to convert it into the answer that would go into the grid. So uh, I think in my in my own personal, like, you can have your own house rules. I don't think that... Uh, using a thesaurus to remember synonyms to a word would be the same as cheating. Okay. But if other people think that, then that's also, I, I accept your assessment. Remember earlier when I was like, I don't know if we'll finish this whole thing in a half hour or <laughs> no. an hour. Like, maybe we won't even start it. Uh, so I'll teach you the skill of how to read clues. But sometimes once you get going, it'll really, you know, they'll avalanche. But also, it might not. Um Okay, let's look at two down, which is also four letters. So after the first, rally in yen. It could be that a rally in yen, there could be a word that means yen, uh, like yearn is a word that holds in rally, and then it would come after the first letter. But... uh, so far, what I've said is very convoluted and hasn't helped, but uh, that would be one of the ways to look into this. I am 
other words that yen means hankering, yearning. Really nailed it. It's interesting that yen is inside the word yearn. Crave, urge, desire, want, wish, hunger, thirst, lust, appetite, greed. Basically, you said teach me a skill and I'm like, why don't I reteach myself this skill also? Uh, let's go down to the final four one, which is 16 down. Numbers on the front of each bill. Numbers on the front of each bill. Hmm. I also, it's not springing in anything. Let's, uh, so the next thing, let's see if we can look at ones that are five. And if any of them, ooh, silver and gold at a market. Okay, nine across. Okay, so market could be store. Uh, silver and gold. Silver is A-G. Gold is A-U. And none of those are the same letters as store. So that's not the answer. Uh, let's see. Okay. Ooh, ooh, I, I've got an idea here. Uh, we're looking at number 12 across. Hoarder okay. of money. Okay, we've got this one. I, I think I think we're about to really crack it open. Hoarder of money lives in Maine, back of dumpster. I think that a hoarder of money is a miser. So let's let's say if that's miser and lives in Maine could mean that is inside the letters M E, which represent Maine. Okay. Um yes. Okay. I, here is how this answer works. Are you ready? Okay. So this one is miser. So if we write in miser for 12 across. Uh, so a hoarder of money is a miser. That takes care of that. Lives in Maine. Lives is is. Is, you know, like uh, right. it, as in exists. Is is inside of M-E. So we've got an I-S inside an M-E. And then it says back of dumpster. And the back of dumpster is the final letter in dumpster, which is an R. So we've got the is inside the M-E. And then the R from the back of dumpster. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sort of. All right. So now that we've got some letters down, it might be easier to fill up the other. Oh, that's the hope. So let's look at three down, which ends in M now. And it's a hopper with bit of money for female group. So a female group might be a harem. A hopper might Is be a hair. hair. Okay. Exactly. And then a bit of money means one piece, one letter of money. The first letter of money, M. Got it. Uh, so look at that. We're on our way before we'd done zero. And now we're infinitely ahead of that. Let's look at the first one for a second just to see if uh, illicit sellers of piano seats. Now that we have one letter in the so middle of that. So a piano seat is like a bench. Yeah, I would say that that is right. Though bench doesn't quite fit because that H isn't in the right place. But also, uh, it could be that seats is all by itself, right? Uh, and so it could be chair, but also it would be chairs. So that's probably not right either. I'm trying to think about whether the word illicit might indicate that we're supposed to scramble some letters. Is yes. there a chance that the C from benches is not like taken away for some reason? Uh, good question. No, the, what, whatever the answer written down here is, will be a word that makes sense. Okay. So the way that the S was taken away from severest to make Everest, it, it only works because Everest is a word when you take away the letter from the other word. Got it. So it could be that pianos, that the word benches is somehow scrambled if that was what our indication was. And so if there was a way that we're like, oh, uh, I don't think that is what's happening here. So it could be that illicit is the word that means the whole thing and then sellers of piano seats, but it's such a, they're so rewarding when you get them. And before you get there, it isn't that way yet. Okay, let me ask you another question. Is there a chance Please. that sellers of piano seats refers to like seats, like maybe in an orchestra hall for like a piano performance, like ushers? Yes, it could be that piano seats, hmm. Like pusher, was... pushers, illicit, maybe like like you're adding a P to ushers and like you're a drug pusher, which is illicit. Oh, that's 100% correct. <laughs> okay. uh, you, you, 
I have all, I guess we're done here. I've taught you. Uh, so let, I, I think pushers is 100% right. So pushers are illicit sellers. Uh, and then, ooh, okay. So I think seats is what is ushers. Like just to seat someone is to usher them. Does that make sense? Here's the only thing. The only thing that keeps me from being completely positive about this is the of in music. I don't, do you play any instruments? Uh, not really. Do you know that when asked to play softly in music? Yeah, you play piano. And the way that piano is Ill is abbreviated is just P. So that's what I think. Piano seats is P ushers and illicit sellers is pushers. And the of is the only thing that isn't completely taken care of. But yeah, really, you've you've really that well, you've got a corner. There's a we've got a whole bunch that. Oh, man, this is exciting. This is we're having fun. A thing that I always say when everyone's definitely having fun. Let's look at four down because we've got a couple in there now showing new vigor. Bum earns penny and it's nine letters. It could be so it could be like re something like re rejuvenated. I don't love the word bum. This person, Monica Zook, is the creator of this puzzle. And I picked hers specifically because uh, whenever Zach and I were doing them, hers were always like the most fun and clever. I'm optimistic that she's she's here with us doing this. So um, can yes. I ask you like a question filling in a puzzle that was printed in July? And I realized that the correct answer uh, to the uh, the question was uh, Elliot Page's dead name. Um, and I was like, I don't, you know, it's like just an interesting question of like what the answer to the puzzle is now. Ah, yes. I mean, so it wasn't clued as, was it clued as the, Elliot? The clue was Page in a movie theater. That's fascinating. I mean, like, I mean, that's such a good question and a good topic. And like, imagine, you know, when we, when I was growing up, I learned that there were nine planets and Pluto was one of them. And then at a certain point, uh, they were like, just kidding. Right. And so a thing that might've been clued in the past ninth planet, like just wouldn't be clued that way now, or that wouldn't be like, so over the course of time, like both language changes and society changes. And so hopefully also like the crossword world uh, as part of the world changes. It is also like historically, like the New York Times crossword puzzle uh, is one that like, if you go, I, I feel like there are like, you know, it's Will Shorts is the guy who is in charge of it the most. He's the only famous crossword puzzle name that I can think of. And like, it doesn't seem coincidentally, this isn't a knock on him that he is, you know, a white man, but that like so many things in in a patriarchal society, like the institutions, uh, like there's a lot of DIY freelance, like, you know, underground and now like gaining more uh, more support and legitimacy, like crossword uh, avenues, platforms and such um, that I think would be, you know, that would have great great things to say, like there's crossword podcasts. There's like, it's so weird that there's like, you know, if you don't know that there's like a crossword subculture, like now, now, you know, <laughs> um, and I'm a person who's like, sometimes people ask me, there's certain, so, certain things that I'm like, I don't identify as just like a crossword, like fanatic, or even like I, I do the, the New York times, not every day, but I do it, you know, a few times a week for fun. But some people do it all the time, every day, like have a streak of months and months and months and like, you know, listen to podcasts and read about, you know, the clues and our fans of the genre. And like to most, if you're not at all a crossword person, I would say I probably seem like a crossword person, but <laughs> to a crossword person, it's sort of like the same way that I'm Jewish, like to a Jew, to like the a practicing Jew, most people wouldn't be like, you're not even Jewish, but uh, there is this old joke that, you know, whatever level of Jewish you are, anyone more Jewish than you is like a fanatic and anyone less Jewish than you is not even Jewish. And that's, the way it is for me with crosswords. Like to most people, I'm probably a crossword fanatic. But yeah, so I don't have all of the, I don't know, I guess I don't have all of the answers to your question. That's a very good question. I guess when you fill in the crossword, you should keep in mind the context of the time it was printed in and what the answer would be. 
Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, do you want to know about like a famous, uh, really interesting thing in the context of crosswords? Sure. Like, I feel like this is like to crossword fans, like this is probably the most, uh, the most told like interesting clue that's to the point that it's probably not even interesting anymore. But in 1996, I think on the day before the presidential election between Bob Dole and Bill Clinton, there was a clue that was like the winner of the presidential race. And it was the day before. And if you put in Clinton and if you put in Bob Dole, either way, it solved the puzzle accurately. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't remember if this was it exactly, but like where there was a B or a C, the clue was like a three letter word that was like, you know, small mammal. And it was either bat or cat. There are cool things happening in crosswords. And they are also, of course, uh, sometimes to the day, a product of their time and sometimes uh, to the grander. Yeah. If you look at crossword puzzles from the 50s, 60s, 70s, you'll see all kinds of things. And there's I think it's that's why when I have listened to and talked to people like about uh, when I've listened to podcasts about these kinds of things, they'll talk about cluing certain things in certain ways that you might not want to th that, you know, I would there's like words that I wouldn't say in crossword puzzles from not even that long ago because we're like, oh, I wouldn't clue this thing like that because of the potential problematic nature of what that word means now that it didn't mean decades ago, perhaps. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to keep trying to solve this puzzle? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's... I don't know if we were making much headway with showing new vigor <laughs> bum earns, pun uh, earns penny, but uh, what a penny could be a coin. Mm. Uh, so if there was the only place coin could go in there is at the end but I don't know what could end in scoin. Um, penny. Uh, yep, I don't have it. So unless you want to. I, yeah, I have no, uh, I have no guesses. Okay. Maybe five well, down. Yeah, let's try five. Oh, yeah, that one's a short one with a couple in it. So group established within firm. It's interesting. It seems like it's either going to be the whole thing, like because a group and a firm are uh, are both things that kind of mean the same thing. So it feels like the whole thing will end up being like a thing that either means group or firm, um, like solid or, uh, but that's not the right number of letters or, or includes, so let's see, established within. Uh, that could mean that it's like a middle thing, right? It could be. Yeah, it either like like in the examples where there was the one that was nigh inside tot, it could be like that. Or it could be the one that was like aha green and then agree was in there. Though I don't think it is likely that. Uh so yeah, it could be something with a small thing. Ooh, yes. I bet okay. Established is sometimes abbreviated. E S T. And so I think it's going to be sestet. So we put E S T in the middle there. And if I I just want to double check now that the word sestet is a word like I want it, it to be. It is a word. It means a group of three. In the, oh, I think it's yeah. sex sextet. Sextet means a group of six people. Sestet is it's the seven. last six lines of a sonnet. Okay. As it turns out. So a sestet is a group, and that is established within firm. So established is est within firm, and firm is set. Does okay, that, cool. Does that resonate? But yeah, I think that uh, makes sense. Awesome. Uh, I'm just going to mark off the ones that we've done, because now there's, there's almost too many. Got to keep track. Yeah. I like to circle the number of the one in the clues just so I don't keep looking back at it. Let's look at that. So let's see. Do you want to try 10 across? Cause error in general price. Make happen. Uh, error. Ooh, mistake. Okay. M-I-S-T-A-K-E. Nope, that's not. Uh, now, 
this could be one of those ones that let's see error i'm like is that a scramble clue but it's not exactly because also there are no if we're looking for an here's a, another tip is if there is if you see a word that could mean like scramble it up there has to be a word in it that is the right number of letters as the clue okay and there aren't aren't any eight letter words here so uh it's not that cool let's look let's look at another one if you want sure. you pick if you'd like okay what about um i think sign for a new raise 13 across it's only okay. five letters oh yeah sign for a new raise okay here is this one could be one that if the word new is indicating like rearrange the letters to make them new which it might be raise is five letters so if it's possible to rearrange the letters in raise to make them somehow mean sign for uh then that would be that would be awesome uh it could be arise like arise means raise uh or like new raise uh and is there a way in which arise means sign for not that i can think of uh so i'm gonna jot down arise next to that just not in the grid but in case uh for now let's see let's look at 14 down uh and that'll tell us one of the letters of 13 across also so 14 down little southern shopping center a shopping center could be a mall uh, oh small yeah. there you are uh, so okay. little is s oh sorry little is little means small and then southern is s and shopping center is mall all right so definitely new raise sign for new raise was not a rise but we do know now that it ends in s so it still could be something that is those letters we aren't yet there oh i've got it i think it's aries because aries oh. is a sign um okay that makes sense if we find out that i'm wrong then that's also okay too but it seems i think that one fits more key like in this lock yeah cool do you want to try 11 down then Sh uh sure okay roman brokers first routine with us interesting so roman could be like italian maybe yeah uh ooh. it also hold on i'm thinking about the fact that broker could theoretically mean and maybe i'm seeing these wherever i can now that the letters of the word Roman are broker, like in that they are broken up and okay. in a, so if there's a way, and then Roman is only five letters though, then it would have to be with us. Uh, and so I don't know how then that would be one letter, but maybe. Maybe we, us, like we, like W, R. These are good thinkings, and I don't think we're there yet. Ooh, how about 17 across? That one's five, and we've got one. Check with an oil man for capital. So maybe like an oil man could be like a baron. Ooh, I like that. But how do, then, I don't know, the capital. Maybe like you could be the baron of a location. Let me, yeah, I'm going to jot down baron just for for capital. Check with bar on yeah not exactly there yet but but i like i like where your head's at let's try one down we got a couple it's long but uh stealing irs mail p a oh pa pa wrongly keeps a thousand dollars federal offense uh per, maybe parental Ooh. I don't know if that fits. Wait, P A R. Uh, no, it does not. But that that is good. Let's see. And a thousand dollars could be a K or a G. So I feel like it's gonna be something that's holding in the letter K or G. Ooh, let's let's try number two. Only four letters, and we've got the first letter. After the first, rally in yen. 
a yen could be an urge, but how would that mean after the first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna do it, but want to keep thinking about that or you want to um no you can move on i don't okay. know pick a different one i don't know let's see are there any that we haven't looked at yet there's a couple i think 19 down we haven't N or sorry 19 nutty. across nutty bread tax pocketed by senator um what's that like bread called like peanut brittle brittle is a is a nutty bread like thing but now nutty here might be an indication Cra to crazy. scramble something yeah bread tax so a senator is a law person okay so it might be that the nutty bread the pocketed by is okay so a senator might be a rep let's say and then other things uh could be pocketed by that inside of it but what could that be good question me what could it be uh let's try six down we haven't looked at that one either okay at one trial loose change so at a trial change. So loose change could be like maybe like petty cash or. Yeah. Or it could be that we should change trial loose into something because trial loose is 10 letters. Now, uh, I am going to briefly uh, do a thing that I also don't consider cheating. But Are you putting the words into an anagram D scrambler? That is what I'm going to do. So trial loose anagrammed. We've got huh, nothing that seems to be 10 letters. Sometimes there will be clues where it says the let the number of letters. It'll say two comma five, and then that means it's two words, and one of them is two letters, and the next one is five. So okay. we know that these will all be one full word. What about uh, seven down bullish study if returned before depression? Great. Bullish, stubborn or angry or mad before depression. Depression could be sad uh, or sadness. Let's see. Returned might mean that something is backwards. So like, like the regal lager example, but we need to figure out what the thing is that is so well i mean bullish is seven letters so is it possibly that yeah i don't i don't think they would have us just put in bullish because also backwards it doesn't really do anything that we'd want it to yeah it's 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 pretty rare for the thing for a word that appears in the clue to appear without changing in any in a specific way let's go back to the top let's go to eight across we've got one of the four letters charge pounds sterling that makes sense so charge could be to make somebody pay for something <sighs> um, i'm going to google british slang for buying maybe sure like i said you very rarely have to like know specific information in to get the clues like and some of the clever things that they do is like the one that says this person lives in maine like, you don't have to know anything about Maine other than that it's abbreviated M-E. Okay. And, and so this one, I think it's the fact that pounds and sterling are both here. Pounds could be L-O-B. Oh, yes. 100% it could. With this four letters that we have, it seems like it couldn't be the first two letters. Pounds hits. Okay, so sterling could also mean, like, excellent, like sterling mm. or... Keen is a word that's four letters that that fits here, but might not be exactly what we're looking for. Keen is a synonym of sterling, and it also makes sense. So maybe that could be it. But then we'd need something for it to mean charge pounds. <laughs> charge, I wonder. In science, you know, sometimes if you knew like... Like an ion that, or something. Exactly. Something... Um, but it does. It shouldn't be something that we have to like. According to, well, I know you were just saying you shouldn't have to look it up. According Please. to the my um, Google, Keen also means has a British meaning of prices that is very low slash competitive. So charge pounds is is Keen 
in that sense, is it a verb? Is it an adjective? Adjective. So. Oh, wait. I don't, I'm not sure about the British, but with the British. Uh, ooh, interesting. Uh, keen. Okay, nope, nope, not that one. Why did you send me to a page that doesn't say anything about keen machine? Cool. Let's see. I was going to real. It, it seems like it very well might be the answer, but I do just want to learn why there there are were places where it is a verb but that means to wail in grief for a dead person okay wait uh, it yes. says if price all right there i i found i found an, an example of it from the cambridge dictionary okay if prices are keen they are lower and offer more value than others uh so okay it, it seems like that could be it. Uh, I'm, Maybe, yeah. I'm still not totally keen, Vinced, but uh, I'm I'm writing it in for now. Uh, next to the next to there, and let's see if that helps us with six down at one trial. Loose change. If that is an N there, what are words that go along with trials? Prevails. Um, oh um, yeah. Court, court casing, legal, legal proceedings, court casings. Um, I have a, a guess. I haven't okay. fully examined it yet. Okay. For four down. Okay. Tell me. Re-inspire could Ooh. be for showing vigor, but I don't understand how it fits a bummer's penny. Re, let me, let me think about that. Re-inspire. A lot of the letters of penny are that pennies are there, but not the full thing. Let's see. But that is that would be great. That that would really really crack this wide open. Oh, I I think I know. I think that's not it. But I do think I now know the me, the thing that's going to stand in for penny. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. I think it's going to be sent. So I think the last four letters are going to be sent. C E N T. And so that. Showing new vigor will be something like resplendent uh, or, you know, like reminiscent, but not reticent. Oh, what is it going to be? Effervescent. That's not it. Okay, let's try to do 17 across, which is check with an oil man for capital. Okay, and you're pretty sure that the third letter would be N? Mm, you know, I'm not positive, but I think so. Check with an oil man uh, for capital. Capital could be money. Let's do a different one. Let's try. <laughs> let's try star stock finally drop. Let's try 18 across again. I feel good about it now that we've we've. It's been a long time since we looked at it. Star stock store. Could star maybe means celebrity. Oh yeah, it definitely could. Star. Ooh, what about uh, a diva? Could be a word that they might want for star. And if there was a word, if divan meant stock, and then we dropped the final letter, then it became star. But I don't think that it does mean that. So that's no. unfortunate. I think it only means uh, couch. Oh, it also means a legislative body, council, chamber, or court of justice in the Ottoman empire or elsewhere in the middle east does that mean stock are there any others that you want to revisit really put a nail in the coffin of this experience Could... hey we there's one that we haven't tried maybe this is the, okay. the answer we didn't do 15 across at all little guy takes in little money in principle uh so it's mm. possible that the letter after the m is an e if i'm right about cent but it's also possible that i'm not little guy a child, a tot, little money, uh, a penny, a nickel, a coin. Mint. Ooh, I like that. In principle. Why would you say that to me? Maybe they mean like a principle on a loan. Yeah. It would have been really great if that just like was solved immediately. <laughs> It'd be really great for the, for the viewers, for us, for our egos. Well, I think even if we don't. Oh yeah. Solve another one. This was still a good, you know, a good exercise. An introductory look into the world of cryptic crosswords. Yeah.
And I think uh, you've given me the tools uh, to finish solving this on my own. That's that's all I ever wanted. <laughs> and uh, I, I would love now, regardless of how you edit this, uh, I would love for, here's, I just want to say, it would be really funny if the finished product was only like five minutes of all of the answers that we did get. <laughs> I will, I probably won't do that, but I will. I understand. Um, that that would be. Um, and in include me saying that at the end too. Be like, it would be really, it would be really <laughs> cool if it was only five minutes. It was just the answers we got. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what it was. Wait, hold on. Um, no, this is, this is the real, this is a real look into the world of a, uh, a rusty cryptic crossword fan, uh, sharing, sharing this world with a new person. I mean, I guess there's a reason why there are no thrillers about crossword solving. Uh, it's possible. Oh yeah. Uh, if, uh, perhaps another time I'll think of other skills that I have or, uh, or dream that I have. And uh, I'll think about more exciting skills to look at. Sure, I would, I would love that. I, I learned how to juggle when I was a kid from uh, a friend of mine who d we were in a public speaking class and she did a how-to five-minute speech of how to juggle. And that's how I learned to juggle. I mean, I had to like do it later, but all the information came in in five minutes. So maybe next time, juggling. Cool. I'd love to learn how to juggle. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rebecca. Well, where, uh, what upcoming projects do you have? Sure. Uh, is this, when do you think this will release? Uh, or maybe, <laughs> maybe. Ongoing projects? Um, sure. I do lots of, during pandemic, uh, Zoom and otherwise shows that you can write me about or follow me on the various social medias. And uh, it's at Mike Kaplan, M-Y-Q-K-A-P-L-A-N. Also, my website will have some information. And my podcasts that come out every week are Broccoli and Ice Cream and The Faucet. And my newest of several albums is called AKA. And so those are places where you can always find me things. Um, cool. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thank you for being in us to join. <laughs>